Does anyone else get all itchy when they haven't built a computer in a while? Or is that just me? Today's video is brought to you by Antlion Audio and their full lineup of audio gear and accessories. Gaming headsets are a combination of two items, headphones and microphones, but they often forget one important thing. Make the microphone good. Just because you don't have to listen to your own crappy microphone doesn't mean your teammates should suffer. With Antlion, you can skip the expensive RGB and overprocessed audio. The ModMic Wireless allows you to equip a broadcast quality mic onto any set of headphones, like my Audio-Technica M50Xs. And since the mic transmits over aptX, it has latency that's five times faster than Bluetooth. For those that prefer in-ear monitors to studio cans, the all-new Kimura IEMs are a combo rivaled only by putting stouts into bourbon barrels. Available in either single or dual driver models, the handcrafted resin in-ear monitors deliver audiophile-approved sound to your ears, while the flexible microphone captures broadcast quality recordings. Don't believe me? This entire ad was recorded on the Kimura. Check out the full lineup of gear from Antlion Audio by following the links down in the video description. And again, a huge thanks to Antlion Audio for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. On the table next to me is a PC that I've been thinking about building for some time now. And the release of System 76's Nebula 36 gave me the perfect excuse to do it. Today, we are going to review the Nebula 36, but to do that, I need to put some parts into it first. If you're not familiar with System76, they are the maintainers of Pop! OS, the Debian-based Linux distribution, but they also make a full lineup of desktops and laptops built for Linux. Now, this case actually comes from their Thelio lineup, which is typically high-end desktop components or even workstation-grade stuff but they recently decided to allow you to buy the case itself so you could build a Linux-themed desktop or even just a Thelio-based desktop on your own. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Now we'll say the components that I selected may not make perfect sense to pair with an almost $300 case, but this is a system that I've been wanting to put together for a little while, specifically to experiment with Linux as a workstation desktop. Can I switch my video editing over to Pop! OS and DaVinci Resolve? Can I run all of my games on a Linux-based desktop? This system is gonna help me explain all of that and figure out if you should do the same. Sticking with the workstation component theme, we are going with a workstation grade motherboard, although this one is a Chinese X99. This is the Jingsha X99E8i, and it is one of the most complete X99 boards you'll be able to find. The amount of I.O. and the port layout is absolutely spectacular. We have a full eight DIMM slots supporting DDR4 registered ECC. We've obviously got that 2011 V3 socket, and we'll talk about the CPU choice here in just a second. We have a full three X16 PCI Express slots, as well as two M.2 NVMEs. One other major advantage of this motherboard is the active VRM cooling, which is often something that is very much overlooked on a lot of these motherboards. Best of all, this board is only $80 over on AliExpress right now. For our CPU, we're going with the 12-core, 24-threaded Xeon E5 2687WV4. This is a Broadwell-based CPU with a base clock of 3 gigahertz and a max turbo of 3.5. It's not necessarily the fastest single-threaded Xeon that's out there, but it is one of the most consistent. What I mean by that is the base clock is 3 gigahertz and the turbo is 3.5. So depending on how many cores your workload is taking advantage of, you're not going to drastically shift the frequency your system is running at. There are up to 16 core processors that run on this same platform that have boost clocks of 3.6 gigahertz, but a base clock of 2.5. Four. So depending on how many cores you're running, you could wildly impact your single threaded performance, specifically for gaming or workstation tasks. So going with this one, again, just gives a little bit more consistency. The memory for the system is exorbitant. We're going with 128 gigabytes across four 32 gigabyte DIMMs of registered DDR4 ECC memory running at 2933. These sticks are going for about $95 a piece on AliExpress and roughly the same amount over on eBay. So getting a fantastic use deal on memory this dense and this fast is probably not something you're going to do. 
However, for about half as much money, you could actually swap out the 32 gig 2933 for 32 gig 2400 and spend about $215 in total. And if you're gonna build this exact system, that's what I'd recommend doing if you need a full 128 gigs. Swinging things solidly back over into the budget camp is our cooler selection. In this case, the Thermalrite Peerless Assassin. It is a dual 120 millimeter cooler with two fans included, all for $34. A very solid deal and a perfect match for our 160 watt TDP CPU. For the power supply, we're going with an EVGA 750 watt Supernova G3. Now, they don't make this power supply anymore. It's one that I happen to have on my shelf. But I went ahead and linked down in the video description the 750 watt Supernova G5, as well as the 750 GT, which are both basically identical in features and cable layout as the Supernova G3 is. Lastly, the graphics card. Now, this is one that I actually thought about quite a bit as far as what I wanted for both performance, amount of memory for potential video editing, as well as price. And I settled on the AMD RX 6700 XT. Main reason is I was able to pick this card up for $220 used. That is a fantastic deal and still about $80 cheaper than you'd find this card today. Most of the Amazon listings that I found were right around $299. For brand new cards, you could also consider the Intel Arc A750, which I might do some testing in the system in a future video. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that one. I also very heavily considered going with the NVIDIA 2080 Ti, which I do have a model on hand and you can find on the used market for a similar $200 price tag. But this was the best option of the three, plus being AMD will have a little bit better Linux compatibility. So that is a quick overview of the components we're putting into the System76 Nebula 36. After the build, we'll go ahead and do a review of this tower. And in the next video, we'll go over installing Linux and a general overview of the build itself and whether or not this whole thing was a good idea. That's the plan. Let's get to it. All right, with the build completed, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Nebula 36 from System76. Like I mentioned, the Nebula 36 is a very similar chassis to the middle tier of Thelio desktops sold by System76. It's a mid-tower case supporting ATX motherboards, a standard ATX power supply, full-length graphics cards, all neatly packed into an industrial art deco package. The outer chassis removes like a desktop PC tower of the 80s and 90s. 
Seriously, I can't remember the last time I had to disassemble a case where four of the six sides came off in a single unit. While it makes for a very attractive enclosure, it's also a relative pain to take apart, which speaks a bit to its OEM chassis heritage. It's also worth noting the front I.O. on this case is a bit unique. On top, we've got a single USB type A port, a microphone and headphone jack, and a single USB type C. The I.O. itself is fastened to the frame of the case with cutouts for each port lining up with them from the top panel. Getting the ports lined up when reassembling the case can be a bit tricky as there aren't any rails or guides for putting everything back together. The power button is also part of the front panel and connects with a set of slotted pins that make contact when the case is together. Maybe not the most practical way of wiring in a power button and LED, but it does give the case a very unique look. Once you have the side and top panel removed, there are two more pieces that you need to disassemble. One is the CPU heatsink shroud, the other is a fan mount for the lower half of the case. And we'll talk more about both of those in just a second. With those last two components removed, the case is fairly wide open inside, which makes installing both the motherboard and power supply fairly simple. Around the back side of the case, there is ample room for cable management and plenty of tie down points for either zip ties or the included Velcro loops. As the sides of the case install from the top down, you'll want to make sure your cable management is on point. Any cables not held in place can make it more difficult to get the shell back into place. As for add-in card compatibility, the Nebula 36 officially supports PCI cards up to 318 millimeters in length, though it recommends a max of 308 to allow for clearance from the front of the chassis. That means some newer flagship GPUs are going to be a bit too large to install here, so make sure to check the dimensions of any card you plan on buying. Also, one massive consideration for your graphics card is the cooling design, as NVIDIA's Founders cards, as well as some Sapphire cards over the last couple generations, have been using pass-through designs for their heat sinks, where hot air from the graphics card is sent through the heat sink and out the top of the case. With the CPU cooling shroud installed, these GPUs won't be able to properly pass air through the heat sink. You're going to want either a blower style or open air style cooler on your graphics card inside of this system. Speaking of cooling options, the Nebula 36 is fairly rigid in that department. I guess while there's technically room for a 120mm AIO cooler, assuming you can even find one to purchase in this day and age, it's clear that air cooling is the only thing System76 had in mind when designing this case. And honestly, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The Nebula isn't designed to be a PC for tinkerers. In fact, the Thelio is meant to be a professional workstation, which means minimizing the amount of maintenance an end user would need to perform over the lifetime of a PC. Not needing to blow the dust out of a radiator means less time disassembling a less than intuitive case and more time actually working. There is a single 140mm Be Quiet Silent Wings fan pre-installed in the bottom of the case for intake and an additional 120mm fan in the CPU shroud which serves as your exhaust fan. And I think we'll start by talking about the CPU shroud. The Nebula 36 includes a fan duct in the upper section of the case, designed to channel fresh air directly to your CPU. While System76 recommends the Noctua NHU-12S, it only took a slight bit of finagling to fit the shroud over a much larger Thermalright Peerless Assassin. There are a pair of 120mm fan mounts inside the shroud itself, which can be used to replace the fans normally attached to your heatsink. To make the shroud work on the Assassin, I just removed the fan mounts and then switched the fans from a push configuration to a pull on the Assassin itself. This allowed literally just enough room to slide the shroud in place. Giving the CPU a direct source of cold air means temps were fantastic on this system, maxing out at just 55 degrees Celsius in a Cinebench R23 stress test. The fact that this massive cooler fits inside the shroud means cooling will not be an issue no matter which CPU platform or chip you decide to use. As for cooling the rest of your components, the Nebula 36 also includes a side bracket for installing up to two 120mm fans. But this is going to be a your mileage may vary scenario when it comes to actually getting the fans installed. See, the side bracket only has traditional mounting points for a single 120mm fan. It was designed to work with the rubber mounting pins, which typically come included with the Be Quiet Silent Wings fans. That means standard 120mm fans are impossible to mount in the second location. In my opinion, this is a glaring oversight in the conversion of the Thelio case to the Nebula as a DIY product. The bracket itself is fairly lightweight aluminum and can probably be drilled pretty easily to add proper mounting holes for a 120mm fan. But in my opinion, 
we shouldn't need to do that. This really needs to be redesigned by System76 to support standard fan mounting patterns. I was planning on installing a pair of ARGB fans to give the case a little bit of flair. So once this video is published, I'll probably break out the drill press and make that happen. Overall, the Nebula 36 does offer quite a few unique features, like the two bay, two and a half inch SATA hot swap enclosure built into the chassis, or the multiple PWM fan hubs spread all over the case, ironically providing more PWM headers than it has fan mounts. It's an attractive case inside and out, especially with the optional walnut inlay included in my review unit. But there's one thing I haven't been terribly impressed with in my time with the Nebula, and it's the overall build quality. More specifically, the material selection for the internal frame. I mentioned the outer shell reminding me of PC towers from the 90s, and unfortunately, the internal frame has a very similar vibe. The frame itself appears to be 100% aluminum, but it's all very lightweight and extremely flexible, meaning there's very little structural rigidity, and the whole case wants to parallelogram in any direction. Without the outer shell installed, the whole case buckles and bends in every direction at the slightest touch. And that's even with both the fan shroud and the side intake installed, adding some mid structure to the case. Pretching gently on the chassis pitches the power supply up and down inside of there. And even with the outer skin attached, you can still bend this case ever so slightly in pretty much any direction you want. The problem is, this is a $270 case, but it's lacking any premium feel or polish that I'd expect out of any other case with that price tag. The PCI retention bracket on the back is just injection molded plastic, and all the port covers jiggle loosely with a GPU installed or bend when I actually try to tighten them down. I've seen dozens of reviews of the System76 Thelio systems over the years, and no one has mentioned build quality issues in them. So, what gives? Are my standards just higher? Did other reviewers miss something? Actually, I think this goes back to a point I made a couple minutes ago. The Thelio isn't a case that's designed for DIYers. System76, again, has basically taken their Thelio pre-built PC and is now selling you the case and calling it the Nebula. That means the Nebula is nothing more than an OEM product that's been adapted to be sold as a bare chassis. Someone who bought a Thelio pre-built PC isn't likely to be modifying the internals of it, where they're not gonna have hands in the chassis all that much, and they're certainly not going to be building a brand new computer from scratch out of that case. However, now that the Nebula is a DIY product and someone like me is constantly going to have hands inside the chassis, my expectations for what the product is are going to be different. While I think the Thelio pre-builds are beautiful PCs, Selling it as the Nebula with a premium price tag attached means I'm going to compare it to similarly priced premium PC cases, and it just doesn't hold up to the same level of scrutiny of a Fantex Enthu Evolve, or a Fractal Design Torrent, or a Be Quiet Dark Base 901. While the end result looks like a million bucks, it also feels a bit like faux luxury. It feels like fake wood grain trim inside of a Lincoln or a GMC. I can't help but feel a little bit let down here. I think a slightly more rigid material might make all the difference in the world in how the system feels, but I'm also not exactly an engineer or a product designer, so take my opinion with all of the grains of salt. While a Thelio pre-built PC would have received a passing grade from me, I think there are more premium and more versatile cases on the market out there at this price point. And that's not to say I think the Nebula is a bad product. I personally really like a lot of the features inside of it. The CPU shroud means you get direct cold air from the outside and can run fewer fans overall to achieve the same level of cooling performance inside of your case. Cable management and the included fan hubs make overall installation incredibly simple. And as I mentioned, the end result looks like a million bucks with very minimal effort. The Nebula 36 is available directly from System76 for $269 or $289 with the walnut accent you see here. If you're interested in picking one up, I will have a link down in the video description, as well as affiliate links for all of the parts from today's build. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on the social medias at Craft Computing. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon or heading on over to craftcomputing.store, picking yourself up a pint glass or any of our other drinking accessories and start drinking like a pro. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.
Cheers, everyone.